Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by the In Tribe, a place for the inspired thriving tribe. My name is Sierra Payton and I am the host of the In Tribe Talks. Now I created this channel in order to share stories from so many other creatives and people that I've come across in my life in hopes to help you along your creative journey. All right. But before we dive into today's guest, I need you to do me a big favor and do yourself an even bigger favor. And you know what it is. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button right now. Just do it. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I wanted to just bring this guest on today because I had such an awesome time working with him on the Oval. And I know that his performance and his character has shocked so many people. And so I just want to bring him on here so you can learn more about him and get a few little nuggets and tips and tricks um, about, you know, his creative journey. And hopefully he'll be helpful for you. So without further ado, let's welcome Gustavo Ramirez. All right, Gustavo, I just introduced you and so here we are thank you so much for stopping by the intribe i so 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 appreciate it <laughs> good to be here good to be here very excited very excited yay all right look like i was telling you before you know we we hopped on everybody's just loving your character on the oval and we're definitely going <laughs> to dive into you know that audition and everything but I just want to say right now, this right here is really for the Oval fans. So y'all just like soak this all up right now. Okay. Like just soak it up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> love, it, love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I just want to do some icebreaker questions. We about to just play get to know Gustavo. Let's just go ahead and dive in. I love astrology, Zodiac stuff. So do you know what your three Zodiac signs are? You know, your sun sign, rising, moon, all of that. I don't. I know I'm a Libra. I think my mm -hmm. sun rising is also Libra. And I don't know the other two. I know I was born on, on a Thursday in October. <laughs> and uh, the 20th <laughs> at, six <laughs> in the, at six in the morning. But I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Six in the morning. Six, 11 a.m. You could probably be. Hold okay. on. Do I have this right? You could probably be like a Sag rising, I think. I don't oh. know. If there's any, you know, astrologers like watching this, please like let us know. Well, what, what, is, what does the rising do for me? What would I do? It just tells me how I how I am. Yeah. Okay. So it's like what you present to the world. And then, um, oh, God, I hope I'm not messing this up because there's so many things out there about it. But then like your moon side is your personality. Um, and then it's like you got these these two signs that are kind of almost like um, not gatekeepers, but like layers to who you are, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So, okay. I might have to look into it afterwards. Yeah. It's all so interesting. And there's like, you know, it's just it's it's astrology. I'd, it's interesting. I'd love to find out who I am. No, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Are there any things that you've heard people say about Libras that you find that are true or false or whatever very balanced they say you're balanced they say we're balanced um i think that's kind of the common the one the common one i get very outgoing and personable charming i hear charming a lot mm -hmm. they go very charming i go how <laughs> <laughs> there you go right there no, right there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i think out of all I, but here's the one thing i noticed that out of all the signs i, I don't think i hear much complaints about the libras though Mm -hmm. Like I've heard people go, oh, Scorpio or, oh, you're a cancer. Like, but Libra, they go, oh, you're Libra. Yeah. Like, it was never yeah. Like a bad <laughs> rep. So. No, you guys you don't. Know. And you said your birthday is October 20th? Yeah. I think that's my grandmother's birthday. Is it? I think so. Is she cool? She was uh, amazing. Like, Makes sense. Yeah, everyone she... loved her, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> All right, peace out, you know, pe peace to my grandma, Sarah Payton, you know, may she rest in peace. But uh, but yeah, I think you and uh, you and my grandmother have the same birthday. So awesome. So yeah. All right. So where are you from? Can you tell us a little bit about your cultural upbringing? What did your parents do? You know, just just a little little bit on the surface of, you know, the yeah, history of Gustavo. We don't want to get too deep and dark. No. no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I grew up in Queens, New York. I'm from New I'm a New Yorker, born in Brooklyn, born right. in, uh, from the five boroughs. When you're from New York, you're from, from the city, you're from the five boroughs. I mean, you have a home, 
but you dwell in all the spots. Harlem was like a second home to me. Nice. And um, yeah, my mother came from the Dominican Republic to the U.S. 80s. And she had five of us. Mm. And uh, I'm the second. And um, yeah, it was interesting growing up in New York, you know, for sure. Because, you know, we have, you know, there's like this very rough part of New York and you have to like kind of survive and kind of get by and not get sucked into like the mayhem which you still kind of do anyways. Mm-hmm. It's also this also like aspiration of like doing anything and wanting to be the greatest and, you know, I can do this and I can do that, right? And still fighting off this like, you're in the concrete jungle. Mm-hmm. So like, it's just so much, it's a complex thing as a kid growing up. I think it was really fun. My mother, she raised us, she worked in real estate okay. um, early on in her in while she was raising us. So that was a, a good way to, to like, she made good money in real estate and raising us five my father wasn't around so so she okay. did do that so she worked a lot mm-hmm. but yeah so she's definitely instilled like a strong work ethic in us but yeah new york i mean i tell people like new york is a a place to to grow up for sure nice i love yeah. how when you know the minute you said queens you just like got like all back like in it again you were like yo yeah i'm from new york you know like i want to hear nothing <laughs> surprised too and be like have you changed your voice i'm like i don't think i have but i definitely know when i get around new yorkers forgot about it it's like mm-hmm. a whole <laughs> who is this guy i love it <laughs> what part of queens were you in we grew up bit? in jamaica queens corona okay. queens nice uh, pretty much all over queens yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I lived in astoria for a little bit and then uh, i moved astoria. over to harlem so you yeah know. yeah and you know queens is so diverse because every spot in queens has like its own name below neighborhood you know like if it's like the asian you know southeast asian north asian african south african mm-hmm. west african like spanish all over it's like when i was living there discovery channel did the human genome project and they set up a booth in astoria and mm-hmm. they just had people do mouth swabs and they found out that Astoria is the most diverse place in the world, like per capita. And mm-hmm. literally there is people from every part of the world in mm-hmm. Astoria. Yeah. And so what they did was they traced everyone's DNA back to Africa. <laughs> so it was it was yeah. pretty dope. I, I, I saw the booth and I was like, I'm not gonna take my DNA. <laughs> but I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the government. But then I ended up doing it anyway and found out, <laughs> like, won't. whatever. Like, I was like, oh, I knew that. You could have told me that. Like, Yeah, know. it is the most diverse place, which is interesting, too, because I, I went to the military at 18. And when I got out from New York to go to the military, that's when I really started seeing, like, I don't want to get into that. But anyways, oh. I just started seeing, like, yeah. racism stuff. Like, oh. I'm like... This is mm-hmm. weird. Like, I started seeing that shit. I'm like, in New York, we don't have any of that really. Like, yeah, we don't like each other for a lot of reasons. And sometimes it could be from your cultural background for sure. Mm-hmm. But it was just like, look at this fucking idiot. You know, like was, that's that's as far as it went when it came to racism. So when I left New York, I was like, oh, people hate people. That's crazy for their yeah. own culture. Like, I'm like, you wouldn't live in New York then. <laughs> that's not I know. for you. It's, it's so interesting. I mean, I, I, I so relate to that because I grew up in New Orleans and right, New Orleans right. is pretty diverse. And like New Orleans is like different too because there's black people there that are like of every different color and you Mm -hmm. like if you mistake somebody for white they'd be like girl I'm black like you know it's like so it's it's that type of thing too and then when I left I was like oh whoa like there's racism I mean not to say I wasn't privy to it you know but it just it kind of blew it out of the water for me when I left New Orleans it was like everything was about color and even like gender and I was like wow that's so like I feel so fortunate to have grown up in a big city like New Orleans and you know like what you're saying with Queens because I don't know we just didn't pick on each other or you know teachers or whatever they weren't discriminating you because you were black or a woman or whatever you know so it's interesting For sure. Yeah. For sure. It also told me that it was learned and not like inherit. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you, someone taught you how to hate like that. I get it. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. kind of like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. No, it, it's such, it's such an interesting thing. Okay. You mentioned going to the military, which um, I think I know this about you. Um, what, what led you to go into the military? Cause I want to kind of get to um, 
Queens military and then acting. But before we yeah. go into acting, yeah. military, what happened there? Like, well, how did you like? What was the thing that you were like? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go join the military. Yeah, it was a couple of things. It was being, it was being from New York and trying to figure out how to get ahead. Right, part of it, like you know, after high school, what do I do? Everyone's kind of working. Everyone's kind of like work at the supermarket or work at the store, or mm -hmm. working at UPS or working at the Nike stores. Like, do I da want that? I know I wanted to go to college. I knew that for a fact. Like I wanted to be smart. You know, I want to go, I want to be a smart guy. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I knew college was the right thing. But then I also knew, damn, people that come out of college look really miserable. They have like, a <laughs> money debt thing. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, I'm pondering. I'm like, the last six months of high school, I'm like looking at books, like, where do I go? And they're like, Gustavo, I'm like, what? You know, like trying to figure out what this future looks like. Mm -hmm. And my my younger brother actually was the one that wanted to go to the military. Thought about it, you know, and I and when he said that, I was like, "Hmm, this is my brother. He wants to go." I'm like, I "Wonder why? That must be interesting." Like that kind of I, I attached to that idea, and as more as I probed it, I realized like maybe that might be a good way to go, do something for a couple of years, and then figure you know more things out. Plus, it's a good you know I, I thought it was a good thing, a good thing to do go to the military. Like you know, it's a tough it's a tough thing. I'm from New York. I should be fine, right? Mm -hmm. So it was more about going to college, trying to figure out where to go next and having like a nice buffer from high school and into life. Like, where do I go now? Right. I was yeah. not having a father. I figured, you know, military would be a good way to, you know, learn some things, you know, how to be outside, how to take care of yourself, you know, little things like that. So that was the that was the what I did. I was like, let me go to the military. And, you know, worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I can maybe get out. I don't know. I didn't think about <laughs> how, but I was like, you know, whatever. Of course, my mom was like, you're going to die. It's going to be crazy. Oh. The military. This is back in 07. So, you know, mm. right before Obama was going to be president, like we're still in the middle of the war. We're still, mm. you know, Iraq, Iraq and Afghanistan. So a very dangerous thing. But there, I guess there was a sliver of me of like, F it. If I die, I die. Like, wow. you know, what what have I got so far? You know, except at 18 years old, as I just lived this insane life in New York. Wasn't the greatest. I'm not super joyful. I didn't have the best of memories. I was like. If I lose something, I lose. Like, I'm not gonna stress it. So, so I was a little bit of a hat, like a like a ten percent suicide mission and ninety percent like I hope this turns out great because you know the possibility you can anything can happen. So you have to put mm -hmm. that in perspective. So yeah. And, and how uh, long did you serve for? I served three years active duty. So I was out there pretty much from eighteen to twenty one, which is good because it I got away from a lot of trouble. In those yeah, for sure. Primitive years <laughs> where people get in trouble. <laughs> And then, uh, then I joined three years of uh, reserve unit. So I went back to this to New York to like now with military background, I can go to school. And I had one foot in the military, one foot out. So in case I wanted to, you know, go back in and say, "F this, I want to get back to the service." I had the reserve. I was in reserves while I was, you know, going to school and all this other stuff. I was going to school for for criminal law. What? I was, I was gonna be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer so bad. Human rights, constitutional law. Wow. Okay. Wait. Before you go there. I yeah. just got to say, thank you so much for your service. Oh, you I so appreciate much. it. And I know that the rest of this country appreciates it. So, thank you, thank so you. thank you. Appreciate thank you so much. Oh, man, so pleasure. attorney, criminal yeah. justice. I, I, what? I wanted, I wanted to do constitutional law. I wanted to like fight human rights. Like, you know, like the what? fucking things that I see in New York. I was like, yo man, people are getting treated badly. I know I got like stopped and frisked like a hundred times just because like mm -hmm. I look young with a North face and my little hat. Like it was crazy. But my brother, my older brother, ah, he's the best. I came back when I came back from service. He was like had this like little DSLR, little like two light sets. Like y'all thinking about like making these short films, like you know, like do some <laughs> stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Like let's do it. He's like, I want you in front of the camera. I'm like, okay. What I gotta do is like here's the lines. I just come up with some stuff. So he had like what? a little. Snip. So I'm like reading this. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And we did. Our, one of our first things, but first we just messed around with the cameras, but one of our first things is that we did this scene from Blue Velvet, and I was playing uh, mm. Frank, the guy character, I was playing Dennis Hopper's character. We should have the clip and like put it up in the corner, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have it, share it with me. I'll put it, it up there. there yeah. see, just put it up there without the, without the audio. And that was yeah. like my first thing, and you know, we, we shot it in my friends. It took us like 16 hours to do this scene, and we were like, nah, this is like how no oh. this is normal. This is how it's supposed to be done. And I just, I remember just, just doing it and I was like, I was so in charge. Like I felt so like, cause I was like the lead. I was like, all right, guys, we gotta do it like this. You get, make sure you guys, hey, where's your lines? Like, I don't know where this came from. It just all came natural, I guess. And yeah, we did that. And we never, we just kind of messed around to do a scene cause we, it was already something that was written. 
and then we started doing our own projects you know then we started doing like my brother's project called the first kill and that's when it started launching like we did one episode people liked it it was just dope how you guys do it, it looks professional we're like really oh cool we did the second one and the third one then we started doing some more projects yeah and it just it just started rolling from there and then that was like that that fork in the road like do i continue with school and be a lawyer and you know or go with acting and i thought to myself like do i want to work five days a week and maybe have fun on the weekends or have fun five days a week and work on the weekend, right? Yeah. yeah. Acting, I mean, as much as it's work, it's so much fun to be, you know, to be on sets and like working with characters and doing creative stuff with other people. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Um, the creative process and it does light you up in a certain way. So oh, that's so amazing. Yeah. I just I love that. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And so, you know, when you were a kid though, did you ever have any just I don't know. Did was there any moment prior to that working with your brother that you were like, I I like I like the light. I like the you know I like being silly or reenacting movies or anything like that. Like, what this is what started for, and I know this is probably why my brother picked up the camera in the first place for me because he picked up the camera and he wanted to do something. So we used to my brothers and sisters and I we'd always watch TV programs like movies like we were really into films like my brother more than most of us like he's a cinephile right I'm a film buff he's a cinephile and then my brothers and sisters are like you know moviegoers right mm-hmm. so we would watch these we would watch like we'd all get together on Sunday and watch like the Sopranos like I was, like you do woke up this mall and we're like we're watching we're like, what happened like watching every season we'd watch 24 you know with Jack Bauer yeah. every Monday night like just in tune that like we watched Goodfellas, Godfather, like all the all the opportunities. Oh, so and good. All we were just like in my whole like the whole family was just mobsters all of a sudden one day. Like, yo, yeah. cause let me get the cologne over there. <laughs> like, no, nah, I forgot about it. I don't want it. And we're like, all of a sudden we're like 14 years old, like here running running mafia families. Like, no, yeah. we're not. <laughs> we used to love movies, you know, Scorsese, David Lynch, you know, all these filmmakers. And so we 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 knew. We knew it was there, like the love for films. And I remember very clearly too, like when we would talk about movies, especially my brother and I, we always talk about films every time I call him. I always, even younger, I always talked about like the characters, the story, like why something made sense, why this character said this to this character and why was it important? And he would always talk about like the style, the lighting, mm. the score. So he always had a directorial kind of mindset. And I always had like the, the craftsman of like character building and like characters. And I knew that was our difference. Like, but it was the thing that we always like when we watch a movie, if me and him gave you a critique of the film, like it's good quality critique. We know why. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, just, yeah. we would tone into these parts. And I think that's why it naturally like evolved into what we did, like him being director, me being actor. Because I think even at a young age, we were just in tune with those parts of the films. Because I don't, I can't tell you nothing about lighting. I don't know I, what. I mean, I can't is. either. I don't. I know it's bright. Yeah. It goes like the lights warm. I'm like, I hope so. It's electricity. No, no, with the color. I'm like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, it's tungsten 300. I'm like, tungsten? What? No. <laughs> Give me a paper. Give me a piece of paper. Oh, that's so dope. And I, I didn't know your brother was a director. That's something else I'm learning. Yeah, about. yeah, I'll yeah. Know. He directed a whole bunch of stuff. He's not doing it right. I don't know if he's still doing it. I mean, he still touches and goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I think, and I knew, and you know, and everyone who's an artist knows, like, there's that barrier of like, do I continue with artistry because this is like the worst risk you can take, mm-hmm. or like kind of like get to a place where like, all right, let me make some stable, let me be stable. I gotta be stable. This is too much. The chaos, up and down. One day you got you know nine hundred thousand dollars. Next day you got like four dollars, and you're like, yo, can I yep. borrow? It's it's a wild you know roller coaster in many ways. So it's like people people can't live with that. People can't something that you know the priorities or the responsibilities but i'm so glad you spoke on that though because that's a real thing for sure and i mean this is a lot of why i started this you know doing these videos and stuff is because i just wanted people i I just think that there's so much misconception about the business Mm -hmm. and you know actors and we always see the a-list actors and creatives like front and center all the time and you know, and I know that they're dealing with so many things that we wouldn't even be able to understand. But then there's also the people, you know, like us that are working actors, working creatives. And it's, it's interesting. It's like the minute we are seen on TV, then people think 
you know, there's just all these misconceptions that you're just like sitting around eating grapes all day, looking gl glamorous, or you're like making a million dollars and you know, all this type of <laughs> stuff. And it's just like, there are aspects to the job that are very glamorous, but there's also years and years and years of hard work and rejection and, you know, just all of these things. And so I just think that, you know, there's just so much misconceptions about it. And I just wanted to bring people on like you and, you know, just share also like my perspective and stuff of just like, hey, like we're creating art. We have a purpose with it. We enjoy doing it. And it's not all, yeah, it's just not all glitz and glamour all the time. When it's a job, it's a profession, like how a doctor goes to work, how, you know, whoever goes to work, you know, ours just happens to be in a very different way, but it's our job and we chose to do it because we love it, you know? So. Yeah, you got to love it. And I think, like you said, also the misconception, I think a lot of young actors come into acting thinking it's about being pretty or handsome and reading lines. And that's, and that is true for like the first, you know, six months of your career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is like, oh, I got a part in a, in a short film. Like, of course I can do this. And you're just reading lines. The person who hired you doesn't know anything about films. You don't know anything about craft. Like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly like that's, that's the road. But I think after like six months, you're like, oh, wait, what do you mean classes? What, what do you mean technique? Wait, what's, who's Laban? What, what do you mean theories? Wait, what's, blocking and then you start to get that one and a half fear of like okay this is weird and then once you hit that second or third year mark you're like am i going to do this or not you know you have to ask yourself am i going to do this or not and if you are that next two three years is like hold on because it's going to go down a lot and then some up and then down further and then some up and then down further you'll see the bottle fast more times Oof. than up but so true I mean, but I remember a mentor more. telling me that, you know, really early on when I was in college and yeah. she was like, make sure you create a vehicle for yourself. And I was just like, what? Like, I'm in college right now. We are like working our behinds off because I went to one of those like really intense conservatories. It's like four uh -huh. years. You're like 18, 20 hours a day. No weekends. Like, it's just that. Well, so you went to that huh? Where'd, where'd you go for that? I went to a uh, university in North Carolina School of the Arts. When I was there, it was called NCSA, North Carolina School of the Arts, and now it's the university. But I just remember in my senior year, you know, one of my mentors just being like, create a vehicle for yourself. And she said this, and she was like, because there's gonna be times, honey, where you're not gonna be working. Like, and she was like, those, she's like, I've had years where I didn't book a job. And I just like, here I'm a senior about to graduate with like, you know, all this like hope. And I'm like, no, yeah. you know, but yeah. I understand it now. And it's not the end of the world, you know, and I have, I've had two years of non booking two and a half, you know, and you, you just, you become resilient. I feel like you hang in there, you know, as best as you can, you know. And, and you know, what's scary about like what you said, two and a half years, like, and, and I know people I, I've done myself like a year and a, a year and change. And I'm like, what's going on? You, oh, you do two things. I think notice that happens. You question yourself, yep. what you're doing, you question yourself. And which is like a very terrible thing. Artists do it more times when, even when we're working, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if I'm doing this. I mean, I got, I booked the job. I'm like, I suck. What am I doing? We do that when we're working. And when we're not working, we're like, Duh, what am I, should I even do this? You question yourself a lot, which is very scary for artists. And two, you never know how long it's going to be, which is scary, too, because you're like, OK, just four months. And you're like, OK, it's just been eight months. No worries. Something around the corner. OK, it's been 12 months. Definitely around the corner. And you're like, you don't know how many corners there is in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a hundred corners. You're like, OK, just just this next corner is like two years and one month. And then so it's it's very scary. It's a very yeah. I think and that's why like anytime I work, I put everything into savings. I take out only what I need for, you know, the rent and mortgage, whatever. Like I'm like, all right. And I've I've had my little moments where I've splurged and all that stuff. And then I'm like, what the hell are you doing, girl? Like, do you know like when you're gonna work again? No. So like keep all of that in savings or try to invest however you can and like you know, you just walk be off smart. A, you, walk, you walk off a set with your luggage like I'm going to Europe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, exactly. Like, F it, I'm out of here. Yeah, be like, look, I'll figure it out. Um, you know, I've done, <laughs> so, I've done it. I've done yeah, it. Yeah, man, and, and you know it, but you gotta live. You know, you gotta live. You gotta live, and so you, um, you have to know when to to give yourself a little because mm -hmm. it's you have to. Yeah, just, you have to for sure. Okay, so 
yeah. just to just to kind of you know digress so you make movies with your brother and then you go do you start taking classes after that or then do you go i'm just gonna move to la oh no 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 oh no there's a massive story between from here to la okay. let's uh, hear it i'll give you that a little smaller version because i don't get too into it but okay while this was going on so i was going to school full time started understanding about craftsmen of acting and then i started going to acting classes like you know this is one I, I studied my first teacher was ella Thier at the independent film school nice. amazing great love her you know she would always be my first teacher right uh, she let me be myself, let me learn like to like dive into things and just like be raw. And I, that's where I really like learned to like, oh, OK, I'm going to be raw with shit. So I got I was blessed to be with her first. Then I did some improv stuff. I was yeah, I'd be on stage at the UCB in New York, uh, not the classic, but like the improv jam that would go like every Tuesday night at 11. And we just go up there and do things doing like the writers actors group where we would just like read people's scripts and like kind of perform them in front of each other. So I'm doing all this. I'm in school full time. I'm hanging out with like my fam some people, family and all that stuff, like, you know, partying and stuff. But then I start getting PTSD. That's like getting real sick. Mm. So my world is kind of like, I'm trying to stay up with everything, like trying to be focused, but my mind's like starting to like, what am I, what's going on? Like, where is these thoughts coming from? Why am I feeling this way? And I had a job too. So I was working full time, going to school full time, trying to be an actor full time, hanging out full time. And I'm doing more of it because the mind is starting to like really start to I'm starting to lose my shit. And I'm like, so I'm trying to get busier and busier so I can control the mind, but it's not working. So I start drinking, you know, start like you know, getting real bad. I lost my school, lost my my job. I can't I couldn't act anymore. Actually, one of the short films my brother and I did called Adam was one of my last short films of that time in that time period. It's about a man who becomes paranoid, schizophrenic. And it kind of like you hear voices in the in the in the film. And we put in a hundred hour film race. They got like top 20. I'm like, great, good. You know, my, my sickness is work is, is, is for something at least, you know, if I end up dying, like F it. Um, I was in and out of hospitals. I had to get, you know, go to the, the VA a lot, you know, do therapy, get on medication and things like this. And so I had to stop everything. I had to stop and I moved to Florida to heal for a bit. I was out there for like a year and a half. What part of Florida? I was in a couple spots close to Daytona Beach and then okay. another spot was like north of Orlando. Oh, okay. All right. Just curious because yeah. I I used to be out there like that. So yeah. Sorry. No, Florida's <laughs> cool. Florida's cool. Florida's cool. I call it my healing state. Yeah. It's my sunshine so. state. You know, and, and I didn't know why I went there, but like I heard I don't know why. God, I heard God's voice. He was just like, all I heard, I was going through this massive like three years of like mayhem, and all you hear is like go to Florida. Like a whisper. And I was like, all right, I'm going to Florida. <laughs> just, you know, luckily at the girl at the time that I was with, she gave me a car and I drove down to Florida. And it was a wild story. I started doing some, you know, real cognitive behavior therapy and getting into my mental health and, you know, getting back into things. And once I got better, or at least I felt I was a little better, I went to like Oregon. I was in Portland, Oregon. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wanted to go back to a city, but not too big of a city because I didn't want to get too much stimulant and I needed like kind of something easy going. And I had a brother of mine, a good friend of mine who lived in up there. And he said, I could stay with him for about a month and, you know, I could find my way afterwards. I'm like, cool. So I did. And then my younger brother moved out with me. So I still had episodes and all this stuff, still dealing with a lot. This was like 2016, 2017, still dealing with a lot, going to VA, therapy. But I got in, I back, I got back into acting. And this is this is where it comes back in. I, I saw this audition thing for like a like a comedy show thing. And I was like. I don't know if I could do this. Let me let me try. This is like now I'm like out of it for like four years, and I didn't want to leave. I had to leave. I was forced out of like everything. Mm -hmm. So, and I gained some weight because of the medication, and I wasn't really being active. So I go, I apply, I go, I show up, and you know it's like one of those five people audition where you're like five in a line and kind of pull you out and work with each other, work with each other, work with each other. And they kept pulling me out. And I was like, you know, I'm doing my thing. I'm like, and then I get the call that night. Like, hey, we want to book you for this murder mystery. So we're doing like murder mystery shows. That's what it was. Oh, nice. Like, the dinner events and stuff. You play a character like, hey, my name is Luzar. Right? I'm the fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Luzar, so Luzar. Nice. That was the whole thing. And it was cool. And I did that for, you know, some time. And then I started like getting back into film acting and doing some acting class in Portland. And I started shooting, writing my own films. Like I started shooting, directing my own projects. And I worked with Open Signal up there. 
was like a public access channel and uh you know we would help kids and you know people like work with like cameras and good equipment so they learn in the camera we get to help them learn this stuff so we're like working together with these kids and people in the city we made projects with them you know did like running shows a showrunner for a bit wow. um yeah it was, it was a trip and then once I got back into it and I got you know I felt comfortable like doing for a couple of years and I was like I right, this is that fork again like what do I do when I stay here and like kind of live my life you know work odd jobs and be an actor or go to LA with the big boys and I was like let's do it wow. so I drove down here 2020 January Wow, you're giving me chills, by the way. I'm just like, like literally, like if I wish I could show you, like I oh, got Lord. chills going on, man. It's so good, so good. This is so good. Okay, sorry, keep going. I drove, I'm like I'm watching a like a documentary right now. Like, go ahead. I'll tell, you this, I'll tell you this quick story too about coming to LA. So I had one more show. I did a I did a theater show in Portland, Oregon. It was a Christmas show, right? We're doing the show. The director and the writer came from California to Oregon because the writer, their family, her family owns like a theater in Oregon. Portland, Oregon. I got picked for the show. Cool. I'm like the lead male for the, it's a female led uh, Scrooge story, mm -hmm. but I'm the lead male for it. But it's female led, right? Perfect. And it's Latino. So it's half Latino, half English. So I'm doing the show. The, the director, her name is Alex Mita. She's, we have this dinner before she leaves because directors, you know, in theater, they, they do the show and then they leave because the stage manager takes over, right? Mm -hmm. Or she leaves, we have a dinner and she's asking people what they're going to do after the show. So one, like we're going around the table, one girl's like, oh, I want to go to California. So she mentions, oh, I have a place. If you ever need a place to stay or when you're in transition, you can come down to my place. I'm like, cool. I'm like, and I'm here and I'm like, huh, I wonder if that's also available to me if I yeah. go. Right? <laughs> dun, 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 comes to me. I'm like this. I'm going to move to L.A. too. She's like, <laughs> nice. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. But... But uh, the choreographer of the, of the project was also like part of their team. And I got really close with her. Like we were good friends. And I was like, yo, why don't you convince her? She, she, so she did. Right. Okay. Nice. So she's like, I, I spoke to Alex. She's like, yeah, fine. You can come down. So I spoke to her like in December 1st. Right. For like a couple of days, we're kind of go back and forth. I'm doing the show. She's who knows where. From like December 3rd, she just goes dark. I don't hear from her. And now I canceled my apartment. I'm, I, I decided I'm moving. I told everybody. What? So the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, nothing's happening. I'm like, yo, it's Christmas. Happy Christmas. You know, have, you know, I'm going to be leaving in like two days. You know, I'm going down. You said I would be able to stay. I want to catch base. Dark. I'm like, all right, no worries. It's Christmas. She's with her family. She's, you know, maybe in Hawaii. Who knows? Christmas passed. I'm like, yo, how's it going? <laughs> you know, I'm going to go down there. You know, hope everything's good. And I want, my plan was I wanted to wake up in LA. That's all I really wanted. Mm -hmm. 2020 eyes open i'm in los angeles with the palms right yeah 27 hits 28 29 nothing and i'm like i can't go down there with no word i haven't spoken to this woman in three four weeks and i'm like i look up i go god you want me to go right i'm like uh, i'm gonna go so i get in the car and i just start driving on the 30th i'm driving i'm driving i'm driving, I'm driving. no message I get to San Francisco. It's nighttime. No message. I don't know where I'm going in LA. I have no idea. I don't know. No one. I have nothing. Literally. So I stay in San Francisco for the night. Wake up. I go to cut a hostel. Get my own spot. Wake up. I eat some breakfast. Coffee. Of course. A little bit of coffee. Right? Mm -hmm. No message. Like, I bet. Six hours. I get to LA. Nothing. I'm in LA. I, have, I don't know. I don't know what's left. I don't know where's who. I don't know where's Waldo. I don't know you at this. I don't know nobody. My I banked it on that. So I go, I so I go to the VA, the VA hospital, because I know a couple things. They have a chapel and they don't care if a veteran stays there. I know that. Nice. That's all I know at the yeah. moment. So I go to the chapel, I pray, and I just sleep in that chapel. Wow. It's like the 30th, it's like the 30th of December, 11 o'clock at night or something like that. And I'm just like there and just sleeping in the fucking chapel and then this VA hospital in West LA. And I'm just like, I don't know where to go. I'm thinking like, where's the hot, where's the hotel? I don't have like hotel money for months. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I have a little bit of money for the month, but so I'm just there. I'm just there. And I wake up on the 31st. Now it's new year's Eve. And I'm like, why did I do this? I can't go. I just can't go back to Oregon. I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. And I get a message. Finally, Ring. I'm like, 
Lord have mercy if I don't kill this yeah. person. <laughs> she hits me up. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm in Chicago. My heart sank. I'm like, what are you doing in Chicago? <laughs> what are you doing? My life's in your hands somewhat, you know? She's like, but this is my place. I live in this area. You can go to my house. The back door is open. I live in Boyle Heights. I go, I don't know what this place is, but I'm from New York. And anytime I hear Heights, I know <laughs> there's trouble. Right around the corner. Washington Heights, Jackson Heights, Shiesty yeah. Heights. Anything heights you like, oh, Lord. Well, look, one of my good friends lives in Boyle Heights. So, you know, shout out to Boyle Heights. So. Out to Boyle Heights. <laughs> yeah. Coming from someone who doesn't know where Boyle Heights is, I'm like, and I look, it's like LA, but it's like towards the east. I'm like, oh, East LA. I've seen this in the movies. Yeah. Boy, like, just, <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm like, all right. <clears throat> I'm like, okay. <clears throat> Orale. Nope. Orale. <clears throat> Orale. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> I see someone. Orale, Holmes. Like, just ready to throw it out there, just in case. Yeah. Are you from Holmes? Don't worry about it, Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Wet and bullets. Don't worry about it, Holmes. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna, it ain't gonna fly, is it? <sighs> yeah, I ended up going to the back of this person's house. There was, like, the neighbors was looking oh at me. Oh, my like, God. No, I'm like, no, Alex said it's okay. Like, oh, okay. Lord. Yeah, and then I did some computer stuff all day long, like set up my actors access, set up all my acting stuff, like you know, started central casting all this stuff, and then went to the beach on on, on New Year's Eve in Santa Monica, put my feet in the sand, just waited for the three, two, one, made a prayer, and drove back to Boyle Heights and just started my new year. Wow. Yeah, nothing. Whoa. Nothing I had. And I was like, but I was in her place for three weeks and she wasn't she wasn't around. Wow. And so that's 2020. And then the pandemic hit. Three like, months later. How crazy is that? You have no idea. But I got to do something that was really interesting. And before the pandemic hit, I'm driving around and there was this line. And I'm like, oh, that must be an audition. I wonder. I parked my car in my little Honda Civic 04 at this time. Parked uh -huh. my car. It was like January. And I get on the line. And I'm like, I get back in the line. I'm like, Hey man, I didn't get the, I go to the person in front of me. I didn't get the email for the size, man. Did you get them yet? I'm like, no, nah, they don't have size in the front. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, my bad. So I'm like figuring out information about what this audition is about. Oh my gosh. I get to the front of the line. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, the style remember is like, oh, we don't have you here. I'm like, I sent the email like two days ago. I'm like, hmm. All right. Well, when you get inside, if he asks you for anything, you know, just just give him your email. I'm like, cool. What the heck was this audition for? <laughs> it was a, it was a, I, yeah, right, right. It was a theater company. It's called Angel City Theater. Up okay. over here, somewhere on by the Home Depot in, in Hollywood. Yeah. And we had to like, he was just gonna like have a monologue. If you have a monologue or do like something, like he was gonna bring us up as well. So I'm like, whatever. So I do my thing. I have a little monologue prepared, luckily, always, right? And I do a couple of things. I get a call. I got called. I, I got the part. We were doing like, yes, I'm telling you, like, I was like, yo, man, this is going to be, this is going to be cake out here. This is going to be cake. Oh Not the part. It was a one act play. There was three, there was three short plays. It was one act plays. And the way it worked, it was like you and your team, you get the script, whatever, how many pages you guys rehearse on your own. So you guys do all the, you know, the blocking, you meet the director twice and then you put it up in wow. February. So. We did that. Like, I, I don't know. I just went in. I did the thing. I got the part. We, I met the crew a couple of times. You know, like, let's meet every day for like three hours. I'm like, okay. I'm like, good. And we did the show. And it was like, right, we did the show like in March, like the beginning of March or something like that. Like, it was so wild. Like, I, I literally. Insane. I love it, though. That's so. I that's bombed in a classic story, like a classic I, moving to L.A. story. I love that. That's so amazing. Audition, I got someone else's part. And I was like, sweet. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it was rough. It was rough that, that, that year. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It was. I mean, oof, we could spend hours talking about 2020. <laughs> but um, yeah. but yeah. I want to just switch gears a little bit and ask you just about landing the role of Officer Heller on the Oval. What was that? Was there a lion outside and you just pulled up and got in line? <laughs> what, there wasn't a what? line. There wasn't a line. But there was an interesting story about that. And this is this is kind of weird. I had with this, I was with this agency for fit modeling, mm. MPM models. It was for fit modeling. This lady randomly hit me up like at two in the morning. Hey, I'm looking for an actor that had these sizes. You fit this size. I saw your profile on this and this and that on this website. Luckily, I was up. 
like this is like the, the story like i was up and i was like yeah sure can you send me your measurements now it's like three in the morning i'm like all right just give me a second i send this stuff can you send me two pictures of this in the car i'm like it's like now it's like almost four in the morning i'm like sure no problem like i don't know why i'm saying yes to all this i should be like see me tomorrow bye right yeah doing all this and yeah she, she we, we we end up like meeting on zoom like the next day you talk about some stuff like, cool i need a fit model I'm like all right put him and then like a couple of days after that or maybe a week or so i don't know not that long but I get an audition from that company, from the theatrical department, or, you know, hey, we need, we have an audition. We see you on our roster, but you're not represented with us theatrically. Would you want to take the audition? Ironically, I just dropped my other agency for mm-hmm. my own personal reasons. And, and that's just, you know, how sometimes the business goes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, technically, yeah, I can take it. I was like, Let me see it. And it was, it was the old boy. Right? I was the, it was Officer Heller. Mm-hmm. I look at the audition. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Man, I think I have an idea. Um, so I did the audition. I sent it. Now, technically, I'm not even signed with this company. So I'm just like, whatever. And they hit me back like, you booked. Oh, my God. What? So I'm batting a thousand at this company right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You gave me for one sure. audition and I booked. Like, yo, you really want to you wanna play with me? And I booked. And I don't, I don't think there was a callback. I don't remember if there was. I can't recall if there was. But if there was, I, it must have. I think, okay, maybe there was. And I think it was like pretty much the same thing. Like I, I think I did it once or twice and they were like, yeah, this is what we're looking for. I'm like, cool, sweet, wow. awesome. And yeah, it wasn't shortly thereafter. Like, so the agent's like, you have to sign with us if you want this project, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, yeah, I know the business. I know the business. Yeah. You know, so we did. And unfortunately though, like I've never had anything other with that with that agency. Oh man. Yeah. So we ended up having to break up. Yeah. But that was one audition. Hey, hey that's that was a so good dope. Call. That's yeah, so dope. Yeah. And then you start getting calls from me. I'm like, hi, I just need to run these lines with you. Like, who yeah. are you? I was like, let's do it. I was like, good. I was hi. I was so glad you did that because and I and I and I don't know about a lot of actors. I met a lot of actors I've met, like, you know, they're good, but when I not I guess on the working level, but like younger actors too, like they, I just don't feel like they put the work in sometimes. Like, yo, like, let's meet, let's meet, let's do this, let's get creative. They want to put like an hour in. I'm, I'm, I'm complaining about other actors. I'm not, but it's just, there's a, there's a thing of discipline when it comes to this craft that I think people don't understand. You want to put an hour in. Okay. But you can put three. Yeah. Like, you're going to get stuff. You're going to find stuff. You're going to dig in deeper and put work into it. And like, it'll come up. But yeah, you started calling me. We're like, we're meeting on Zoom. We're like, da 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 you know? You're like, I want to do some stuff in Spanish. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do it you know yeah. like i just i i love playing and i love you know, discovering and and all of that stuff and so i was just so glad that you were open to it you know so yeah, I, to, I, to I, rehearse I, and everything so thank you yeah no and i think i think i mentioned like i don't know i think i maybe mentioned it or it came, maybe it came in my head and you probably answered it without me asking but i was like is it gonna be okay with the show with tyler and stuff you're like yeah yeah, I was like, let's just try like, it. You know, I, I, like, let's try it. Let's try it. I'm always, I'm always down to just like try it, and I'd rather a director or a producer tell me like, no, go, do do it the the way that it was written or done, than Fair. me like being like, dang, I should have did that, you know, or like, yeah. why didn't I try that? And so I think I, I see that with a lot of new actors is, you know, they're afraid to just try things, and it's not about like changing the script or anything, but it's just like try it a different way, say, deliver the line a different way or whatever, you know? And so, and yeah, so anyway, I just, I, I'm always just kind of like, let, let, let's be a little renegade here. Just like, let's just, let's just let's yeah. push, push the envelope just a little bit. The director produced, they could always be like, nah, uh-uh. so, you know. Yeah, nah, I respect that. I highly respect that. And I, and I, and it's true. You gotta take those risks because otherwise everyone else is just doing the lines too. Mm-hmm. Like we're all doing the lines like that's just i tell that to a lot of people too like when they'll be like stuck at a line or they'll say something when they're auditioning with me i'm like why don't you just not say those that line and just kind of give a look instead like try that but the, but the line if i don't say the line the world ends i'm like nah it won't end i promise you yeah, <laughs> like exactly if, if it's something different like or just you know maybe use your language i, I remember i spoke to and you know me i'm learning russian Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. And I spoke to an actress who 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 had a, who who's also who also knows Russian, and, and and she had a thick accent. I was like, why don't you just use like a Russian? Like, why don't you say that sentence in Russian? No, no, it won't be. It won't be good. I'm like, but it's who you are. Yeah. Who you are? Like you are that. 
Mm-hmm. If you're not pretending to be something, you are that. And a matter of fact, that character will, will I think it might come alive. Oh, I don't know. It, they don't want that. I'm like, all right. Yeah, Can't do anything so, about that. Uh, but yeah. it's things like that that'd be like, why don't we make this character a little Russian? It might give it the edge. Like it could we could use that later down the road too, you know? Yeah. You know, like, oh, okay, cool. Like, we'll have to put subtitles. No worry. We'll act, we'll, we'll hire a person to do the titles. Not a big deal. We're so afraid of not playing by the rules sometimes. And the big secret is, is that there are no rules. I mean, I think that, okay, I think some of the rules are, you know, be kind, be professional, be disciplined. But it's like, yo, like, let's bring these characters to life. Let's have fun while we do it. And, you know, like, let's uh yeah like let's just play you know like let's leave the ego at the door and just like play and have fun so and i think that comes with the with the rehearsal with the with the with the uh the allowing yourself to have that space to like yo can we mess around like yeah just learn our lines and then like the next hour like ah you want to mess around like let's Mm -hmm. just do this in a way where like maybe we just finish having sex like so like i don't know just to see what comes up afterwards yeah. not the idea of it it's just like oh, okay oh do you know what i said that something a certain way like gives me an idea about this thing i did one time let me try something with the old the script and let's go for it and see yeah. what it looks like and you're like nah it doesn't work all right cool let's not do that again <laughs> yeah, know? exactly but i gotta say with all of that like you're such a great scene partner and so like, oh, thank you again because I, you know yeah, i love I, I love being able to work with people who are just fun and open to try things and like professional, yeah. you know, all of that. And so you bring all nah, that you to the too. table. So, so you thank more, you, you oh. more, oh. Oh. You way more. I was like, all right, all right. I'm like, yes, my scene partner's good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's, you know, not that people are bad at things, but like you said, like the openness, the being able to like, yo, let's work on stuff, like bringing the idea of bringing Spanish, which is obviously like perfect for me. I'm Latino. So like, and also promotes that idea as well. Closing and, you know, like your creative adventure in la- allowed inclusion, like, which is kind of like a double plus, you know, yeah. that's, that's where it goes. Like it leads to more things. Yeah. And you, yeah. You're great to work with, you know, you know, how to it down. you're very, very free you're very open like yo let's 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 play yeah Man, for sure it's all about who's a, across from me you know, then, so, you know and then you become serious I know. <laughs> which is no but that's the thing like people people think we, people take us like oh we're kind of joking yeah yeah we're all smiles like look at our smiles like yeah look at those smiles i right, action let's go like we're militant with this shit like yeah anyway. no you yeah. drop down into it mm-hmm. and i'm and you, like you will not like don't nobody come over here trying to f up this this thing like don't do that because don't we, do that we got this you know not yeah. not talking specifically about uh the oval the production but i'm talking about in, in life as an actor like you got one shot with this yeah. Yeah. very often and it's just like uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, don't come up no we i'm right here me and my scene partner i don't care you got drama going on. What don't come to me with that? Like, yeah. <laughs> or you yeah. want to gossip right now? But no, uh, uh, I like I like to yeah. think I like to think with like the Kobe Bryant mentality, that mama mentality. Yep, same here. At six a.m. I'll see you at five. Mm-hmm. Oh, you gonna stay till two? I'm not. I done. know that's how people think I'm insane, but like whenever I work on a project, I wake up every morning at four a.m. And mm. even like in my day to day life, right now I'm like about four thirty five a.m. But I do that particularly with working on set because you set in general, it's like there's so many fires going on at any given point. And I'm like, if I could get up early enough to get ahead of the fires, like, let me just do that. Even if there aren't any fires, like, let me just get up so I can already be in my zened out mode, ready to go, not stressed out. I can't, I hate waking up and like rushing all of a sudden, you know, like I need to like, take that time to just get ready, get what's settled the, in and go, you know? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Oh, that's a question I'm asking you. Stop it. Did you want... <laughs> I'm actually about to ask you a question though. All right. And we'll, we'll, I'll answer that later on. But what I will say, what I want to oh, know what? though... Well, you'll be there at six, I'll be there at five. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. All right. No, I'll be there at three. No, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> midnight what all right so I mean, right now <laughs> we're right here i'll teleport man um <laughs> oh my god i just lost my train of thought uh gustavo 
My bad. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. But okay. First of all, I want to. I just want to thank you again about just speaking a little bit about mental health. We all like. I know there's so much you know on the internet and everything about that. But I'm just curious about you as an artist. You know, living in LA now. I mean, how do you balance or just find balance between? You know, we were talking before um, and even during this just about, you know, you got those stretches of times where, you know, it's very uncertain. It's very scary. Um, you know, bills are due. All, just all of those things. What are some things that you do uh, specifically to just kind of help stay balanced um, during those times as an For artist me, versus human? <laughs> like, you know, yeah, no, one well, and the same, but. 100 percent, because it, it you, and that's very true like you there is a balance you can't just be like this for me it's it's god it's the bible mm -hmm. you know I, I i i dig into that book when i can um i know for me like walking with the bible is like walking with the cheat code of life like i don't like i see something like okay that's that cool i can avoid that like okay that's good it's in here that's good i'll walk with that yeah. so i'm very religious when it comes to you know my own personal relationship with god so that's one thing that keeps me super, at least avoiding, you know, common pitfalls. The the intricates of life is different. We right? get it because our our world is very modern, you know, Instagram and all this stuff and you know technology and moving cars. But the basic compound of life, I think, is is in there. That's that's the basic part. Then you can add on meditation, right? You got to take care of your your, your you got to. Be quiet up there. You know, the mind loves to run wild. Oof, yes. You gotta you gotta have to find a way to peace yourself, you know, find that peace. And anything that helps with that is I'm all for. Right. If it's if it's meditation, if it's just, you know, reading, if it's hey, you need you need to sleep more this week, go for it. You need to sleep 12 hours today, go sleep it. Like, you know, take the break. So that's very healthy. I mean, important. I think working out obviously, obviously is another thing where you just got to keep your, you know, good, good, good shape, good health. You do um, boxing, right? I think I saw that on your Instagram. I boxed for a while. I haven't done. Oh, yeah, in a you while. came to the Oval with a black eye or something, huh? With a bruise or something, you know, right? Yeah, I remember. I was like, Wait, what happened? Where did he end up in Atlanta? What's going on? <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> yes. He was spotless. That man had no bruises. <laughs> I didn't do nothing to that guy. <laughs> I'm like, you got a black guy. We have to cover that up. I'm like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just broken nose. Hey, guys, I'm ready for work. I'm like, Oh, my God. <laughs> guy. But, um, and you know, and so, so for that kind of stuff, mental health, you know, I mean, God, you know, got to stay close. And then comedy shows. Nice. How many shows? Go to the go to Groundlings, go to UCB, you know, go to stand up, the improv, this comedy store, like go to those places, take the hour, take I'll be working sometimes and I'll 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 go to the shows as a break. Like I'll be working then da, 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 da. I'm like, oh it's nine o'clock, let me go to a comedy show, go there for two hours and come back and start working again. Wow. Like wow. that's something that I think like let me go laugh my ass off. And so those those are the things I think that that keeps me sane. <laughs> In LA, because LA is La La Land in many ways, and it will chew you up if you are not paying attention. For sure, it will chew you up fast. I've For seen sure. it, seen it over and over. For sure. Um, For sure. Mm. What do you do? A lot of what you said. I mean, definitely keep my faith in God. I do meditate every day, and sometimes it's hard. I'm not gonna lie; it's really hard with um the meditation. But I force myself to do it. My mind will be so active sometimes. I read. I mean, I, I have like a little stack of books right here in front of me. One of the books I'm about to finish is called The Big Leap. And yeah, just like I just try to listen to just uplifting music every day. I work out every day. I I haven't done it in a, like maybe a month or two, but I usually go hiking or just mm -hmm. like try to get out in nature as much as possible. I feel like that helps me a lot, but it's been kind of cold and my life's been a little chaotic lately. So I just haven't had a chance to, but I'm going to make time for it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's those things. And, and honestly, it's, I just try to do it. I do those things every day, but I try to like go hard at it sometimes when things are going really, really well, because mm -hmm. it's like me just trying to get ahead of, you know, those slumps, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, I, I ran, that's why I say like, I get up at 4am when I'm working. It's like, I just try to like ramp it and bump it up even more 
because that I feel like those are the times a lot of times that people are like everything's good I don't have to oh I don't have to meditate I don't Mm -hmm. have to work out I don't have to pray I don't have to you know but when (laughs) I'm the opposite I'm like twice a day meditating you know everything because I understand the highs of all of this and then after that high the lows feel so low you know and so that's such a tangent I'm going on, but uh, just to answer your question, that's what I do. And, you know, just overall, just try to be as healthy mentally, physically, just healthy and wholesome as possible. You know, I'm definitely not perfect at it. I will not sit up here and lie to you and say that I am. I have my moments. I had a moment yesterday and, um, you know, (laughs) but I just, I get up out of bed the next day and I'm like, all right, I'm still here. Let's go. So, so yeah. Yeah, good. good. Good to hear that. Glad to hear. Yeah, thanks. And so, all right, we're gonna just switch gears. There's so much more I can ask you, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're gonna try to keep this a little tight. Um, rapid fire questions. All right, so I got five questions. Try to answer them one word, one sentence, maximum two. No one ever follows these uh, rules, but whatever. Let's just see what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, no rules earlier. Now I got to follow know, rules. What's the matter with I you? Know, people Thank will you. go on for hours, and I love it. Thank you. Thank you, people who do that. So anyway, um, yeah. let's just go here. So who inspires you? Seven. Oh, okay. I was, <laughs> I was just trying to give you answers. Um. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. Who's seven? No. Anyway, go ahead. Who inspires me? Uh artistically anyway okay an actor i'll pick an actor that i really like look up to when i see his work or see his work because he's not alive no more but philip seymour hoffman mm, good one good one love, good one, good love one. Him. i, I want to yes. strive to to be able to do what he was able to do to me like make me feel the way he feels things yes i love that all right next question if you weren't a he uh creative or an actor what else would you be in the military, 20 years in, command sergeant major, sergeant major of the army, all the way up in the cabinet, you know, like in the in the muck, I'm going out there day in, day out, putting the uniform on. Let's go, soldiers. Let's vote. You know, like nice. that. Kind of yeah. <laughs> I'd love nice. to do that. Or NASCAR. What? I don't know. Every time I get behind a car, I'm like, I can take these guys on. Like, I have no reason. I don't speed, but I Okay, go, you I better not. Play. Not in L.A just think about it like i should just do it (laughs) i'm gonna we'll talk after (laughs) i've never driven fast i don't like it (laughs) but i think about it gustavo okay all right next question Um, well what's the first thing you do when you wake up (laughs) that sounds familiar I thank God. I I become I, I I try to be grateful for what I got, where I'm at. Yeah, I recognize or at least give some kind of acknowledgement to God and be thankful. Yeah. Nice. The rest wow. of the day I'm not. At least I, you know, got it in early. You know, mm. distracted. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. I love that. All right. What's your dream project? Gambit as an X Men. Mm. Yeah, speak a little Creole. Come on, mon ami. Come All on. right, you better. I don't wait. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. That was terrible. I, I, was terrible. I, have, I have to help you. I have to help you. That was terrible. I know. I'm pulling you straight up. But yeah, how I speak <laughs> Creole. I was looking at some videos too from people speaking Creole or that kind of Cajun. That Cajun. Excuse me. It was Cajun. There okay, you go. Okay, Cajun, Cajun is a little different. Creole. Yeah. It's like you got. What your mom yeah. and them doing over there? Mm-hmm. Like that whole. Mm, I want to be. I remember one time my dad called me and I had him on speakerphone and I got off the phone. I was like out here in LA and people were like, was he speaking Spanish? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, no, that's not, where did you get Spanish from? Okay. I mean, he is, you know, my dad got that Mexican and Cuban in him, but you don't speak no Spanish. You, know, so. you should have just looked at your friend like this and just walked away. They, and it's funny, like, no one can understand him except for me. And Let I'm me- like, he, and it's like, I translate too. Like, people are like, what did he say? And I'm like, Oh, he just wanted to know where such and such was, you know. <laughs> Hold on, let me hear. Let me hear your impression of your dad. 
Oh my God, I'm so put on the spot right now. So he'll be like, uh, hey, what's your name, boy? Where you from? Oh, hey, what, what is it? Gustavo? Yeah. Is it, is it Gustavo? I got a, I got a friend named Gustavo too. Oh, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. wait, you, you from the, 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 the Dominican or something? Yeah, huh? from New York. Okay. All right, you know, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been there from times, you know. Like it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it was good. I just, I, I took the Greyhound all the way down there, and I went down there, and then I tr- turned around over there, and then, uh, you know, oh, yeah. uh, you ever been to that corner store? Over there? Like, you just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what them do over there. That's literally, like, it's... Yeah, okay, like, okay, 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 okay. Right. I'll be that time, you. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. That's when you look at someone, you go, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's literally like what a lot of people do. And, I, and I'd be like, oh, no, he just asked you a question. <laughs> like, you know, I'd be like, like, oh, he just wanted to know. What do you uh, mean? You can't eat, yeah? You can't eat, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Can't eat, yeah? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, chicken? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He is a character, and I love him to death. Good. Nice. All right. So very last question. In your own words, you want artists and creatives to practice a little more blank. Mm, so it's a tie between imagination or discipline. Mm. Yeah. Because I feel like you either have one or the other for some reason, but you don't want to have both. <laughs> yeah. You want to have imagination and be creative and you know be outside the box and be yourself and not be that afraid of like, I'm going to do this. But then you won't be disciplined or you'd be very disciplined. I do this. I take care of this. It's snap. But my imagination is zero. Like, I don't want to take any wild. And then you got to learn. Like, then creators got to learn to, like, allow to be both. Yeah. Get up at three in the morning. Do the work. Do Look at the script. Dissect the script. Work it. Work it. Work it. Work it. Then memorize. And then when you're doing a, a, a project, whatever, allow yourself to be extremely creative. Mm. I, think they need, I would like more of that discipline oh. and creativity i mean imagination i love that ah gustavo that's so good that's so good all right i can ask 10 more questions but we're just gonna we're gonna just skip them <laughs> let me ask you that last question yourself i'm, I'm curious oh what to practice a little more what would yeah what would you say i mm. my i usually say grace mm. for me I just feel like people need to practice a little more grace on themselves and others, creatives. And I I do think that creatives in general should just practice more, like we're known for compassion, so it's such a cop-out word to say, but it's just like, like for real, just like real compassion, you know? I I feel like I've just been in spaces where that doesn't feel, I don't know, it, it just it doesn't feel like it's there sometimes, you know, and mm-hmm. we don't always take into account all the things that everybody could be going through at any given time. We're just, I think we're just so wrapped up in our own stories and drama and trauma instead of like, yeah. you know, really like being compassionate to like, hey, you might be going through something 10 times worse, but you showed up and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So thank you, you know, and we gonna, we gonna rock it out and be here together for this, you know? So, so yeah, I would say grace and compassion. So yeah. 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 That's, that's so true. That's so true. I, I recently I've heard, I heard a lot of like me, 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 me stuff. And I'm like, there's other people, like there's people in front of you, like chill out, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. I got I got to practice that too. I look I think a little bit more. I mean, you, you know, work. it is but that's a, I think that's another thing that's not easy sometimes cuz we are our problems and our things that we're going through, sometimes they feel very colossal. You know, they could feel really really big and I I've known for me the moments where I've been kind of like in that despair place the moment I go outside or I go like volunteer or when I teach, like I go teach with kids and stuff. It's like the moment that I take the lens off of me and onto somebody else. I don't know. It's like those things just melt away, you know? And so it's, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to really explain. And again, it's something I feel like I could talk about for hours, but 
I will, I will, I will say this to that because it, we do go through a lot of stuff. We do go, and it does feel colossal. And sometimes we don't have outlets. Sometimes we can't yeah. go, deep, but sometimes we can go have our friends come out because they live far. They're busy. And sometimes, and when moments like that come, I had this phrase, and it's, I think I'm sure it's in the Bible, but I heard it in, um, you know, passing. It goes, "Be still and know that I am God." And I remember, like, when I'm when something is as tumultuous, like, Fuck, "What do I do? How do I handle this?" Be still and know that I am God. Like I got you. You are my son for a reason. Yeah. And I will take care of you. So that every time when I'm going through some heavy stuff and I don't know how, I, I know I'm going to eventually fix it, hopefully, right? Yeah. But I don't know what. I I I it takes at least like 90% of the pressure off. And I'm like, yeah, just be still and know that I am God. And, mm. and just miraculously, like. You can mm. feel it. You're like, and something comes up like an email. Dring, hey, yeah. you want to do this thing? I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's so thing, true. Thank you, Lord. It's yeah. so true. It, and that's why I started putting a notification on my phone. It pops up every day. God got you. And it's like, I could be going through the worst day ever, and that thing would pop up, and I'll be like, all right, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's like, worry. Your, worry, your worry has never changed an hour in the day, nor has it giving you back an hour like just mm. chill out exactly like exactly mm. ah gustavo all right where can people find you find out more about you um i have an ig i'm, I'm only on, i'm not too much on so social media but i have instagram at gustavo underscore j underscore ramirez um i do have a website five three films.com some of my older stuff that's been on there yeah just you know type in my name and you'll find me on imdb as well stuff like that just type in my name and you'll i, I pop up I'm getting there. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. I know that everyone is going to just eat this all up. And oh, yeah. You dropped so many gems, and I just appreciate it. So thank you so much for stopping by. It was such a pleasure to to talk with you, to to be in your space. You, you make it super welcoming and super safe and super fun. And it's just such a such an honor. And I really Aww. Thank you. thank you. Oh, 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 I'm bowing down to you because because oh, you you did all of that. So so thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. You. Well, I hope to see you soon. So, all right. Sure. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. I mean, wow. Wasn't that such a good sit down talk? Oh, I loved it. <laughs> And so thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to keep up with Gustavo, go ahead and hit the links down below. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit up the comment section down below. And if you are looking for any more content at all, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit up theintribe.com where you can find more articles, interviews, memberships, courses, all that fun stuff. So head on over there. And if you like anything that you heard in this video at all, go ahead and do me a big favor and be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. All right. I am so looking forward to seeing you at the next video, but until then, please stay inspired and keep thriving and know that I love you. All right. Take care. Bye.